Well, hello there, and you join us here today to talk about building a collection. Um, Tom and I have both run away with a fictional $10,000 to spend on five different watches. Now, um, Tom, you have a problem with money. You're a bit of a, a fritterer. Did you manage to come in on price this time before we even begin? Yes, I did. It's easy to spend imaginary money. That's fine. That doesn't require a lot of thought. Although £10,000 doesn't get you very far in the luxury Swiss watch world. Um, so it was a little bit tricky to sort of juggle it around and uh, and see what you could get. But I think I've done all right. I'm quite pleased. For the, the benefit of our American audience here, you will notice that Tom said £10,000. I specified $10,000, so Tom is already whatever the exchange rate is between £10,000 and $10,000 out, um, which means before we've even begun, he has cheated, which means I win. No, wait. Oh, that means I'd get less, wouldn't it? <laughs> right, £10,000. So you have spent at least $12,000. Um, okay, well, I've come in under. <laughs> So I'm gonna. I should at least, dear viewer and listener, get a half point in advance of that. So if you think Tom's choices are all better, remember that because he's cheated again. The Casio, the original GA twenty one hundred, and um, just just shy of a hundred pounds, which is well, I think the dollars are quite close these days. The dollars are quite close these days. Close these days. Close these days. He's pretending, he's pretending like he has no idea what I'm talking about, but I know he's done this on purpose. Look, I've got very strict parental locks on my computer and I can't access US websites, so I have to just go through the code.uk, so it's going to be in pounds. And that's why this week's sponsor is NordVPN. <laughs> Do you want to browse watches for challenges finding $10,000 watches online? And you're stuck. NordVPN something something. Nord VPN, send us some money for that. That was that's not a freebie. <laughs> um, right then, we have picked five different categories of watches that you have to purchase for ten thousand currencies. Um, we have got a diver, a driving watch, a pilot's watch, a dress watch, and a wild card. Tom, do you want to start with your diver? Yes, so I have gone with a Oris Aquis Date, calibre 400. Lovely. So this is a 41.5mm steel diver. It's got all your favourite dive watch features, your bezel, your screw down crown, your screw down case back, which funnily enough is see-through, so that you can see the wonder of the calibre 400 inside, and domed sapphire crystal, and a gorgeous sunburst blue ocean dial with a rubber strap and 300 meters of water resistance. What could be more divery than that? You can go deeper, but for the money, I think this is pretty good. And I think it's a good all rounder. Mm. And yeah, I just think this is a fun watch. And you may notice that if you were to check out the product page for this on Oris's website, that it's pictured alongside images of Ferris wheels because <laughs> Oris likens the wonder of looking through a sapphire case back at a watch movement to seeing the open work of a ferris wheel at the fair and there's a similar kind of sensation you get which is that's nice and i, I think oris themselves are kind of like a ferris wheel you know they're not the most exciting ride at the fair but <laughs> boy are they colorful and fun and and fun for everyone and, and and that's what this this watch is i think it's it's a diver but it's 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 a simple joy i seem to recall as well that the ferris wheel is prone to breaking off of its hub and rolling complete with its occupants into the sea at which point you'll be very grateful that your watch has 300 meters of water resistance so oris sensible mr sensible always thinking ahead um yeah it's cool i think it's a nice watch and the caliber 400 that's a in-house oris movement yep. conceived by them uh, last year i think so um cutting edge yeah fun watch i like it Strong competitor for the obvious Tudor Black Bay 58 for sure, and um, better better generally in specs, I think, with that extra diving water resistance. And like you say, mm. the blue dial is very, very fetching. Really, really good, solid, sensible watch. Um, I don't think, like you say, it's going to really set the world alight with the way it looks, but 
if you want to spend some money and get some quality, this is a good ratio between those two things. Yeah, it's not it's not going to set the world alight, but it's not going to upset anyone either. And I think that's... That's all you can ever hope for in life, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 2,650 fun bucks. No. 2,650 tokens. <laughs> English tokens specifically. <laughs> yeah, so that's cool. Well, um, let me take you 100 meters shallower for the choice that I have made. This is the Doxa Sub 200 Professional. Um, you'll notice from the 200, this only has 200 meters of water resistance, so I do lose out in that respect. However, you're only going to be spending 910 pounds, which in US tokens, is 1,100. Now, um, aside from it being available in lots of fun colors, um, 42 millimeters across, lots of lovely colors, fun, 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 but it's more than just superficial because this thing dates back to 1967, or at least the, uh, the 300 meter version of this watch, which is a bit more expensive, does. It was the first dive watch to have an orange dial. Mm. Of course, uh, when you're diving, you want it to be legible. When you're wearing it out of the water, sometimes you misplace your own wrist and you're like, where is it? Where is it? Ah, oh, it's underneath that bright orange thing. and You find it again. So really useful, very practical application there. Was also worn and developed by Jacques Cousteau, who seems to be the village bicycle of dive watch ambassadors. Um, seemed to wear Rolexes, Omegas and this Doxa too. He, uh, he helped out quite a lot in the old dive watch world. I think he invented orange. I think that's why Doxa have orange. Yes. Uh, Jacques Orange Cousteau, to give him his full name. Yeah, cool. Doxa's a serious diver. So, yeah, you can't argue with that. And what with the spirit of the times being very colourful in the watch world, orange is going to go down well. Yeah, good. Good fun one. I'm glad you like it, Tom. Next one. Driver's watch. You're driving in your lovely Nissan and or Toyota. And you want you want an appropriate watch on? What have you picked on that sticks within our ten thousand dollar budget? Well, I the the watch that I found I couldn't tell you if it's dollars or pounds or rupees or what because um, I can't find any info about it. I mean, there's bags of info about it, but are you pleading ignorance on this one? No, 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 no. I've got a backup, but I thought this was really interesting. So this is the Casio Edifice suspension ecb 2000 pb dash 1a i love it this is inspired by a formula car suspension and it's got a unique carbon fiber reinforced resin case design where the lugs are arranged in a forearm configuration um and it's very racy and all those good things and if you scroll down to the icon it says uh, great for motorsports which i thought was quite nice <laughs> How are they quantifying that? Um, well, with a little picture of a man in a go-kart. Um, <laughs> and also keeps yourself in time. Yeah. If anyone ever had a go at you, oh, you get yourself in time, son. And you go, oh, I need a Casio edifice. Great for overseas travel and easy to see in darkness. So if you need to keep yourself in time while racing overseas in the dark, there is no better watch for you. So they got you covered. But again, I don't know where it's coming out, if it's coming out, how much it is. So I can't use it. But um, that's my that's my racing in for the Casio Edifice line. So I've gone instead with the Casio Edifice EF539D-1AVEF, which is a catchy name, isn't it? Not the EF539D1AVEF. The very same. Yes. So the Edifice, great for motorsports. And as you can see from the black and white dial and subdials, it all exudes a sense of power, precision, and speed, all those sorts of things that you would associate with broom broom cars. I'm sure you agree. I am a connoisseur of broom broom cars and I'm looking at this watch and I'm thinking, yes, this will do me well. And for just £160, which is what, around $200? Yep, yeah, two, yeah, 160 to 200 tokens. Um, <laughs> 48.5 millimeters across so it's a bit of a bastard but i'm sure you could pull it off if you're a hench i mean it may be a casio but there's no plastic here this is stainless steel andrew case and bracelet well where every gram counts in your motor racing vehicle carrying 48 millimeters of stainless steel might not be <laughs> suitable but nevertheless yeah. it will definitely survive if you uh, stick it into the barrier yep uh, so yeah, so uh, lots of functionality, um, date, yep. a stopwatch function that can measure up to 12 hours. So that's good if you're 
racing, I don't know, a tree. <laughs> um, yeah, I just think it's it's a cool watch and it's going to serve you well. Um, Tom, £160, that's massively kind of under budget if you were to slice it evenly, which leaves you plenty of cash to spend. I do, however, note that the Casio website, as of present date, tells me that this watch is out of stock and unavailable. What do you say to that, sir? Um... Luckily, there are a thousand other Edify for you to choose from. So uh, if you can't get this one, just pick another one. They're all very complicated looking, so I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. Um, but yeah, Casio Edifice. Can't go wrong. Do any of them have the most important aspect of a driving watch, which is the one and only dot over 90? <laughs> um, no, no dots. Well, hold that failure, because I've got a watch for you, and it has a dot just above and slightly to the right of 90, which automatically puts it in the upper echelons of Amazing Driver's Watch. This is the Zin 144 STSA. Um, you're familiar with Zin. We've spoken about them before. This particular watch is built around a design that was made for the German military. And it was not just made by Zin, it was also made by Tutima, Eterna, and... Orfina alongside Porsche Design. I never heard of any of those guys. Well, you might recognise it if you have seen the hit 1986 film, Top Gun. You seen that one, Tom? The Charlie Sheen one where he eats the food off the lady. Sure. Yeah. Um, in Top Gun, Tom Cruise uh, wears an Orfina Porsche Design watch, which is based on the same German military model as this sin. So if you uh, ever have a hankering for playing some beach volleyball with your friends, your very close friends, perhaps, you uh, you can wear this watch and relive the entire thing. This is a, a very functional and solid watch. Looks absolutely fantastic, I think. Has that real kind of like, this is built for stuff about it. Yeah, the, the second hand looks like it could just rev up at any minute, doesn't it? <laughs> that would be really unhelpful, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, where, oh, uh, it's, oh more, less, more, oh. Um, it costs $2,600. And um, did you know that Zinn actually got Bell and Ross going? When when Bell and Ross got started, they they said, "Oh, Zinn, can you make some watches for us so we can put our name on watches and make money?" And and Zinn were like, "Okay." And this was one of the watches, so you can also buy this as a Bell and Ross as well if you fancy. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I might have to check that out. Check it out, you shall. But before you do that, what pilot watch did you purchase? I've spent two thousand six hundred tokens on a Tag Heuer Otavia. Tell me more. First, maybe you could tell me something. Yeah. The Otavia's quite recent, isn't it? It's only, a, it's sort of, I think, maybe been reintroduced in the last couple of years. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. So it was uh, originally a watch that was knocking around in the 60s. Combination of right. uh, automotive and aviation. A watch that's designed for both. Mm. So they thought, let's cut down on the research budget and just make one watch and, and everyone can wear it. Whether you'd, if, if you sit and you move some things around and the thing you're in moves, then this watch will be fine for you. So they could have put train in there perhaps as well. Bicycle. <laughs> hey, and if I come over budget on the whole pounds, dollars fiasco, I can just lose my drive watch and have this as both a driver and a pilot. Exactly. That's good thinking, Tom. Excellent. You should be a politician. Okay, cool. That's cleared that one up then. <laughs> But yeah, this re-edition uh, hasn't been around for that long. A few years, and it's, yeah. it's rather nice, I have to say. So yeah, I, I, I think I saw it about the time it came out, and I, I really liked it. Um, it stood out to me. I think it's a really attractive watch. And I just think there's just lots of details on it that I find really appealing. I think it's a nice combination of visual stuff. In particular, the uh, the curved bezel, I think, is very nice. And then you get that step down. I've told you how I like an inset. Mm -hmm. Smoky blue texture. The blue, Andrew, always very nice. Um, and I just like the overall legibility of it. It's very clean. I like the, the big numerals and the hands and the date. It's all very well laid out. And um, I think it's quite bold while still being understated at the same time. Yeah, I just think it's a very handsome watch. And... It's 42 millimetres and it's got some sort of movement inside of it as well. A ticking one, I, I'm guessing. Yeah, so it's got the cutting edge calibre 5, a uh, COSC certified movement inside, um, which is good. Yeah, I just think it's got nice sort of vintage warmth about it and I, I really, really like it. And, and I don't want to get into a debate with you, Andrew, whether or not Tag makes <laughs> uh, They're a dynamite brand. They've been around for a while. 
huge recognition and you've got to give them respect and that's all there is to it it's dynamite watch it really is there are a lot of elements in this watch that make my eyes feel nice mm. that um that bezel we've seen a lot of ceramic bezels but this one with that slight curve it gives me kind of boiled sweet vibes yeah it's definitely very nice and tactile and something juicy about it sure yeah and it's got that it's got that tarmac texture on the dial that you you quite like too very reminiscent of both yes race tracks and runways so <laughs> double duty there they know what they're doing i'll tell you the only thing i don't like about this watch and i do very much like this watch the crown looks a little bit like they uh, have a little bit of a clone stamp error going on it's kind of there twice <laughs> Yeah, it does look um, like they had some oversized crowns from another watch left over and they just wanted to use them up and it, it's yeah. maybe 30% too large. But um, I, I think it's all right. I quite like it. It's nice and chunky and knurled. It feels um, feels durable and that means it's expensive and that means it's good. Well, there you go. Watches. £2,600, which is slightly more in in dollars so uh dollars are quite close these days I've, I've stuck with the chronograph theme for my pilot's watch because i have gone for a watch that i have nearly purchased on several occasions whilst in an airport this is the longine navigation big eye ah what i particularly like about this watch is the deliberate misspelling of navigation yes they took out the n because navigation is one better or one worse, I'm not quite sure. Saves on time when you're reading it if you are in an airport and you're a pilot and you need to make it to the gate. Exactly. Yeah, just going to shave some time from having to read the end there. Oh, I missed my plane by one letter. <laughs> Curse you, Longine, and your navigation big eye. And they changed it. Yeah. But I really, really like it. I really like chronographs with massive pushers. You've got the big chunky crown. You've got the big step case. And then, of course, the big eye, which is just sort of giving you a little bit of a hmm look. Yeah, yeah. Bit of asymmetry there, which is mysterious and intriguing. Indeed. It's got all my favourite qualities of Peter Andre. And who can't resist Peter Andre? <laughs> yes. In the made-up words of Peter Andre, this watch is insanium. I don't really know how else to describe this watch because I've only chosen it and I only like it because I like it. Yeah. Um, it's obviously based on heritage and comes from history and has things in it, but it just looks really nice. It's one of those watches where you just think, okay, finally, Longine, you've managed to get all of the proportions correct. Yeah, sure. I think it's doing the same thing as the Otavia a bit, isn't it? It's just a combination of lots of little nice things that make a, a much better hole. Yeah, it's a cool watch. You've got a better hole. <laughs> Thanks. I guess. Tom. What? The fourth of our five watches for which you have to not go over $10,000 with is the dress watch. Everyone needs a dress watch yep. because, Tom, when you go out and you're schmoozing people at one of your business dinners, oh, yeah. you need to look the part. What have you chosen? I have gone with a Cartier Ronde Must de Cartier watch, which is French for must have round Cartier watch. It is. I didn't know you spoke French. Yes, I have a over 10 day streak on Duolingo. <laughs> um, now, when you're thinking about dress watches, you're thinking about class and there's no one classier than Cartier. Mm -hmm. But this is just a stylish watch and Cartier, it's luxurious, it's jewelry, it's dressy, it's the party. So this is a 36 millimeter case, steel case. It's got the beaded crown, Andrew, set with a synthetic cabochon um, spinel there, which is... <laughs> a what, sorry? Cabochon. You know, th that's just classy Cartier goodness there. Little. But it was until you said it. It's a classy little nubbin, <laughs> which is what you want. Sweet luxury tea. It's 36 millimeter, which you might think is a bit small, but this is dressy and there's a picture of a dude wearing it. So don't ever go. And... It's a quartz, yeah, but it's a high autonomy quartz movement. And yeah. when you're at the party and you see Jake Gillenthal across the way and he's got his Cartier on, he's going to give you a knowing nod. And he's not going to care that it's quartz, is he? And he's going to get Remy Malik over for a Cartier selfie. And that's all that matters. I would want nothing less than a Predator style handshake. <laughs> from Jake. With Cartiers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think the watch is very deserving of that. Oh, it just, 
Cartier could do no wrong. Yeah. They're just so good. Whether you buy the quartz or you go for a full-blown mechanical, we saw the mass mysterious, that thing was bananas. But if you just want a really high-quality luxury watch that just oozes class and is completely the opposite of try-hard, it's just Cartier all the way. It really is. It's one of those brands that has managed to bridge the gap between jewellery and watches and everyone is all right with it. Yeah. Usually, like, Bulgari tried it and people are like, meh. But Cartier, you're just like, yep. Yeah. Here's, here's my measure of Cartier, right? Go on. Um, Frasier, from the hit TV sh- show Frasier. Yeah. Wore a Cartier. Not Cheers or Wings. <laughs> he upgraded to a Patek Philippe later on, but um, but he wore a Cartier and he's just like, yep, yeah, if Frasier wore one, that's awesome. I want one. Did he? Cool. What did Niles wear? No one likes Niles. £2,420 for that Cartier, so that's a bargain, probably. A safe blood is um, what they'd say around here. Cool. Uh, for my dress watch, Tom, I have gone for something that looks kind of similar, actually, to your Cartier. It's very simple, but quite small, 35 millimetres across, very elegant, very thin, 6.6 millimetres thick. This is the Nomos. The Nomos what, sorry? How are you saying that last bit? Uh, the, the Nomos Sanente. Everyone knows that you can't pronounce stuff, so just go for it. <laughs> well, I, I've got a bone to pick with Nomos here. They say it's Tangente. That's definitely a hard G. That's definitely Tangente. They can shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And the reason they can shut up is because I'm going to say nice things about their watch. This is an absolutely dynamite watch. If you want, If you want juicy watch spec for $1,600... Mm-hmm. You get a genuine bona fide silver plated dial. That's a lovely kind of like shimmer to it. You get heat blued hands. None of that painted stuff. Properly heat blued. I think they even quote the specific temperature they heat it to, which is a little bit, you know, you know when people, they lie too much. <laughs> they give you too much detail. It's like, yeah, heat blued to 234 degrees C. What of it? All right. Uh, and it comes with the in house. Alpha Calibre, which is a lovely little hand wind thing you can see through the back. And it's just, the whole thing is just like this little perfect compact package. And I dare anyone to complain about any of it because I think it is perfecto. Mm -hmm. Dare you complain about it? Not dressy enough. (laughs) Not dressy enough. (laughs) No, it's too, it's like you'd wear that to tennis. What, to to play or for the, the after tennis trophies and quaffing? Uh... Mm. I think, Tom, you're just trying to distract the audience from the fact that you can't understand the difference between pounds and dollars. Dollars are quite close these days. I understand one thing. Go on. Wild card. Tell me more. Now, I don't understand entirely what a wild card is, but seeing as I've got 2,000 tokens left over, Mm. Mm. Grand Seiko Quartz. I've snuck a Grand Seiko in there, Andrew. So you've picked, let me get this straight, you've picked a, a steel... Japanese quartz watch with a black dial as your wild card. Yes, because you can get a five watch collection of bangers for 10 grand, including a Grand Seiko. Yes, it's a quartz, and that may be important to some people, but to a lot of people, recent Moonswatch events have demonstrated that it's not important. You are just interested in the brand name (laughs) and what is inside and the material it's made of does not matter. This is a Grand Seiko 37mm stainless steel watch for £2,000. And it's part of my five watch collection for 10,000 tokens. How about that? It, it does It does feel like a, a £2,000 square to fit in your £2,000 hole. But it is a bit of a wild card because it's like an expensive quartz. It's Japanese. It does all the things you don't expect of a high quality watch and it does them really, really well. Like the 9F62 movement in that, you don't get to see it, but it's actually really, really good. It can be thermocompensated by a watchmaker and serviced properly. It's designed to last. But the dial and the hands of the markers are all incredibly high quality and really what you're getting there in, in terms of that quality is the, probably the equivalent of an Oyster Perpetual in, in terms of the production quality but for a lot less money. Yeah, absolutely. And because of its build and its styling, it you can do anything with it. Um, it's it's a wild card because you can take it anywhere and do anything with it, and um, you won't necessarily pay a high price if you fudge it up on a mad wild bender. That's my wild card. I'm sticking to it. Well, to be honest, you could ditch everything else in that collection and just stick with that and be perfectly happy. 
Um, Tom, I've taken a slightly different approach to my wild card because I've gone to Russia. Controversial. Oh, yeah, indeed. They've been up to stuff, and this is one of them. Um, watchmaker Alexander Shurikov, the most Russian name I've ever heard. He is a watchmaker who makes some very, very interesting watches, as you'll see from this Neva or Neva. Both of those pronunciations is probably wrong. Yes. Uh, it is named after a uh, Russian river that is 74 kilometers long. Uh, very, very beautiful, apparently. It is known as the Venice of the North and has some 350-odd bridges spanning over it. That's inspired the look of this watch. You've got the cold tundra of Russia and the blue of the river. This fella here, this Alexander fella, he uses pole jot movements. Again, I've probably pronounced that wrong, but those are Russian movements which are based on Etta, and he has uh, very, very carefully disassembled them, refinished them, and made sure that they perform to a very high standard. Before we even talk about the front, have a look at the back. That's a pretty thing. Wow, yeah, that's lovely. Wow, that's, yeah, very striking. I love the, uh, the rose gold coloured plates and stuff. It's very fetching. And that's an Etta, you say, essentially. Yeah, so so Poldrot is a Russian company and they base their movements on um, the Swiss designs. Why reinvent the balance wheel? Yeah. Made in Russia, finished in Russia, and when you get to the rest of the watch, it's a really rather cool thing. It's quite a beast at 43.5 millimeters um, stainless mm. steel case, but it is treated with a blue finish, which is rather interesting and matches the blued hands as well. You'll notice the sub-second dial has an N, instead of just a hand. That is N for the Neva name. And there is a very, very finely gearshade, a uh, very silvery dial, which just gives, it's giving me a little bit of Grand Seiko vibes in that whole kind of like, oh, reflection of nature, looking in amongst myself and feeling at one and at peace and all that kind of stuff. Do, do, you, get, do you get my vibes? Sure. I would, I would say even sort of Breguet territory. Well, I'm glad you said that because this is well, it's limited to 49 pieces, but price-wise, $1,200. So when it comes to what your eyes tell you and what the price tag tells you, this is very different, but in the good way. Um, and I think that that is a, a rather nice choice to have is that, hey, do you know what? I fancy something a little bit different, a little bit wacky and wonderful. Uh, I, I would say that fulfills that quite nicely. I am getting a little bit of spectacles and moustache vibe from the dial. <laughs> and the date window looks a little bit like two front teeth. So that's working in its favour, though, to be honest. So, yeah, good one. This would be one of the first things to come to life in some kind of uh, Disney animation, I would say. Absolutely. Um, and I've got $300 left over. So you definitely can't buy yourself a moon swatch with that. But... But um, but in theory, you could. So, uh, Div, you're a listener. What do you think? Who picked the best five watches for those five categories? We'll say around $10,000. <laughs> um, let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please do like, comment and subscribe. Uh, we very much enjoy doing these and we'd love to do more. So uh, if you want to see them, we're willing to make them. And uh, Tom... Good sport, good show. Um, are you pleased with your result? Yeah, that's fun. I wish I could actually buy all those um, without imaginary tokens, but a man can dream. He can indeed. And so too will all of you, dear viewer and listener. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye. Bye-bye.